I really believe that God wants to do something very special for you today, today. After all, this is the day that the Lord has made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this dear loved one of yours right now. And I just ask, Father God, that you do something according to your plan in their life. Activate your plans in their life for a supernatural outcome of benefit, of blessing, of virtue, of goodness. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to receive the word of God so that our lives will never be the same again. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We've got God's help, God on assignment in our life, helping us to live life strong. That's what we're into. Live life strong, part five, leaders lead. Leaders, listen, don't, don't you put yourself aside here. Don't you um, exclude yourself from this. Leaders lead, and this is all about you. To sum up our review to this point, we know that the conclusion of the matter is this. You are called and designed to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. In ourselves, we're a pathetic, weak mess. But in Him, in Christ, we are called to mount up with wings as an eagle and soar. To soar above the storms and the tornado force winds of life. We've learned that chicken hen house theology it just doesn't work with our God designed for life. You and I were made in the image of God and therefore we can't choose to live away from his power source and fantasize that we'll accidentally live life strong. It's just impossible. What airplane can fly without any power? Zero power. It's just impossible. Being hooked up close to God and with God, all things are possible for us. Yes, we get to be strong in the power of His might, His strength. My friend, no matter how low and defeated you feel today, how discouraged you feel, you can truly live life strong in the power of God's might. In fact, I know and believe that so much for you that I actually wrote a book just for you. Can you believe it? Here it is, and I want you to get this into your hands quickly so that you can begin to unlock these principles that God has for your life. 58 chapters full of secrets, secrets for life that I've learned. This is for you. This is for you. I'm so excited about you accessing God's unfailing strength for your life. I've seen the weakest of weak becoming unimaginably strong. God does it, and I know you want it. So please go to our website and get this book. You can also access it off the LRC app, Leaders Lead, Part 5. A dad was doing his best to lead his daughter. One day he decided it would be good for them to have a, a daddy-daughter lunch together. Making some conversation, he asked, so, so what do you think about boys, Jenny? Daddy, I'm not going to date until I'm 16 or maybe even 18. Dad was impressed, but then she added, but there are some things that could change that. Hmm, interested, he asked. What could change that? You mean like maybe how good looking he is? If the guy's really good looking? Jenny responded casually, oh, oh no, daddy. Looks aren't that important to me. I mean, mommy married you. <laughs> oh dear. I bet Jenny even meant that as a compliment in some strange way. Leading is not for the insecure, that's for sure. But this is for you. Leaders lead. This is for you. I know in my heart this is for you. You're called to lead. God created you in His image, designed to have your being inside of His character, and then you're called to have dominion and authority over all the stuff, not the people, but just over all the stuff, the systems. Unfortunately, many of those in a place of authority distort the idea of leadership and make it about having the right to tell people what to do, to push people around and be demanding. Leading is going before, not pushing from the safety of a corner office. Leading is being the first to forgive, the first to love, the first to give, and model the character God determined for us to walk in. Leading is not being short-tempered, demanding, pushy, and fostering this elitist ideology. 
That's being arrogant. And the book of Proverbs says, it's the seeds to utter ruin, destruction, and a great fall. You're called to lead, to be a good leader. The greatest leader of all time is Jesus, and he modeled leading by being the great shepherd, by serving, even dying on a cross for all who need saving. Jesus himself gave us instruction on how to be a good leader. Listen to how he breaks up an argument between the disciples when the mother of the two brothers asked Jesus for a higher position in his kingdom relative to the others. Oh, dear. They wanted more? More? Matthew 20, starting at verse 25. When the ten others heard about this, they lost their tempers, thoroughly disgusted with the two brothers. So Jesus got them together to settle things down. He said, You've observed how the godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. Consider this. Jesus never criticized the guys for wanting more. He just told them how to be first, how to be great. You think your desire to lead or be great is pride, ego? How about you take it before God and see what he thinks? If you're willing to serve others, put others first, be the first to bow down low and raising up others, then you're pulling a bona fide Jesus, aren't you? Husbands, if you truly want to lead your family, learn how to serve. Be quick to love. Show mercy. Be the first to forgive. Lead the way in humility and think of others' needs first. Your family will be in a race to follow you. That's right. That's truly leading in kingdom of God eternal style. You honor God leading that way. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, Everyone can be great because everyone can serve. Now that man understood Jesus' principle for how leaders lead. I've got to say it again in this context. You are called to be a leader. Now you understand better what I'm saying from a biblical standpoint. You're called to be great. And as Jesus said in Matthew 20, that means being a kingdom servant. Be great by being the first to lead, help, and serve the people. God has assigned you to love, to walk in love. Now let's be honest. That's how you live life strong. You may feel weak as putty today. You might feel like a horrible failure at life and the person who let the whole world down. But Jesus is the Redeemer. Good news. Jesus redeems you from the curse. He turns your story around. You are a leader. I've spent time with a man who's been an alcoholic all of his life. He was drinking away $1,000 a week at one point but now he leads others by selflessly serving other people who struggle with the same addiction. He encourages alcoholics to have hope, to dare to believe, to be sober one more day, to pray one more day. Leaders lead. He could have folded up and laid down in his past, but instead he got a hold of Jesus' message on being a leader, on being great in Christ, being strong in the Lord, and guess what? Leaders lead. Booker T. Washington was born into slavery in 1856, emancipated at nine to work in the salt mines. He became a man of deep personal faith in God, overcoming to become an educator, an author, and the first president of what's now known as the Tuskegee University. He said this, those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. What an overcomer. This man, what an overcomer, what a leader. There's absolutely no joy or fulfillment in grabbing and hoarding and being self-centered and just consuming. Living is in the giving and real leaders know that. Mother Teresa, a powerful world leader and influencer for good and serving the poor, she said, give your hands to serve and your hearts to love. What an amazing impact that woman has left through her legacy of leading. Leaders lead. Leaders lead, and it's rarely from a big corner office in the Gilded Tower. But this distinction brings us to a very important biblical principle for leadership. This principle I want to share with you is definitely part of being like an eagle and soaring. 
soaring above the clouds. If you want to live life strong, understand this. All leaders must lead themselves first. All leaders must lead themselves first. You can't be 100% you without being fully under the hand of God. You were created, not self-made. To think you've independently evolved into you is the ultimate deception. You are God-dependent whether you acknowledge it or not. Some people go into eternity lost, refusing to bow a knee to the Creator of every breath they've ever taken simply because of the deep-rooted deception of their pride and ego. Their refusal to lead their thinking into acknowledging God will be their own judgment, their own sentence and decision for death. Like one guy said to the other, everyone has the right to do stupid things, but you're abusing that privilege. <laughs> it's impossible to live life strong without discernment. If you don't know you're wrong, how can you course correct? How can you permit yourself to change your thinking? And if you can't discern the other person's character, how can you decide whether to distance yourself or pursue connection, regardless of how uncomfortable you feel? Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., who served as an associate justice of the Supreme Court in the early 1900s, said this, even a dog distinguishes between being stumbled over and being kicked. Now that's sad. That's sad when a dog has more discernment than many people. And why is that? Well, if you don't know your true calling, you neglect to lead your thinking. Now you're vulnerable to abuse. Your discerner is turned off and the world is influencing your thinking. Leaders lead. And if you can't lead your own mind to submit to original intelligence, and I talk about that in greater detail in my book, Live Life Strong, but if you can't lead your mind, you're doomed. Maybe that's why this culture is so into doom spending and doom lifestyles. Your greatest leadership opportunity and assignment is to master your inner self. That's right. To a great degree, you must lead you with God's help. You must lead your thinking with God's help. You must master your desires with God's help. You've probably heard me say your inner reality becomes your outer reality. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the famous 19th century writer and poet, said this, What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. It's true. We all need to master our appetite and steer our thinking and therefore steer our lives. St. James said this, if you can bridle your tongue, you can be a perfect person. Many leaders on earth fail to lead themselves and so we watch them self-destruct publicly. They obtain positional authority on earth to manage a leadership assignment, but fail to be authentic because they, they can't manage their mind, their thinking. People who fail to lead themselves often resort to dictating direction to others, subordinates, employees, children, spouse, family. Tyrants are born out of a weak self-esteem and the failure to lead one's self. Dave Barry, famous writer and columnist, said this, When trouble arises and things look bad, there is always one individual who perceives a solution and is willing to take command. Very often, that individual is crazy. <laughs> That's definitely not an authentic leader leading, right? Often people who fail to lead themselves experience the constant dripping of self-loathing. Self-loathing doesn't make you humble. In fact, it often ignites acts of pride and escapism. Bullying your children will not make that secret bad habit go away. Being demanding of your spouse will not address that fear that torments you. Surrounding yourself with people that say yes to you, yes, 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 that won't fix your self-esteem. Excelling in work and performance will not reverse the damage of your failed character. Making more money and getting more trophies will not make you any less a liar and a fraud. Most any kind of addiction is rooted in the deception that you don't have to lead yourself. Now, all of that said, let me remind you that no matter where you're at, God loves you. 
He loves you so much. You're so loved that he sent his saving son to forgive you of all these sins and restore you to your rightful place back on the dominion authority track. You can't live life strong the way you were meant to without dominion and authority. You must exercise the power of rulership over your thinking and over your words. Allow me to insert this. You're not living life strong if, I said if, you have no control over that mouth of yours. If you're speaking lies, bitterness, and even crude talk that's like the world, you're not operating the power and dominion controls of live life strong. As we've said before, you're playing into live life wrong. That's your song. If you can't rule your tongue, you're going to get stung. And even worse, your leadership is dung. That's D-U-N-G, dung. Hey, leaders lead, and it's time to put some fight into leading you. Like a wise fellow once said, fight like you're the third skunk trying to get on Noah's Ark. That's a crazy picture. You've got to learn to lead you. God gives us tools and weapons to master our minds. That's how to be a spiritual mastermind. And by the way, I talk about that in detail in the original intelligence section of the brand new Live Life Strong book. Oh, you've got to get this. You want to get this. I know that. Think of it. We all have to program our computer for the information that we want it to put out. So even more seriously, we must direct our mind on what to think. If you think on cares and worries, you will wreak havoc on your body with a release of all kinds of cortisol, chemicals, and improperly balanced hormone infusions. Stress chemicals are making people very sick and even killing them. You have the biblical responsibility to set your mind on things above. But the Bible says that we're to do that. God doesn't set your mind. He'll help you and give you the tools, but you must make the leadership choice to do that yourself. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, And set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on things that are on the earth. You've heard me warn about spiritual socialism before. It's a sense of entitlement that lowers the bar so everyone is entitled to results regardless of their faith or obedience. That's not Bible, and it's not true. It's a demonic lie posing as progressive Christianity. But meanwhile, people are hurting. They're sick. They're offended. They're divided. They're dying. Hebrews 12 verse 8 tells us that the proof of being a child of God is that you're corrected and reproved. Let me help you right now with some spiritual correction. You must set your mind. It's not your daddy's or your mama's fault that you think stupid. You must own it, take responsibility. And the moment you do in the presence of God, he not only forgives you, but he empowers you to live life strong. I know from personal experience, had a lot of stupid thinking, and God empowered me to live life strong. You see, the enemy has you running from taking responsibility because you thought it was a short game of avoiding the blame for everything else. No, it's the opportunity to rise up, rethink, and set your mind on heavenly program so that you can overcome and handle lots and lots of authority, dominion, power, mountain-moving power, eagle-soaring, live-life-strong kind of new heights and new glory. Leaders lead. And it doesn't start with a position or a title. It starts with submitting the arena of your mind to God. You must learn to lead yourself. It's the secret to changing the world. Now, there is an ease to leaning, to leaning on our own understanding. Adam Grant, number one New York Times bestseller said this, the curse of knowledge is that it closes our minds to what we don't know. When you lean hard into your own thinking, you lock yourself out of rethinking or evolving forward into better thinking. You're actually being lazy and refusing to lead yourself out of a confirmation bias. Progress requires change. Growth requires change. In previous parts, we've talked about the doctrine of spiritual socialism being promoted in the barnyard with chicken coop theology. It doesn't fit you. It doesn't suit you. Setting your eyes on things above is always at conflict with the barnyard mentality because eagles don't hang out in the barnyard. 
Eagles don't get words from God hanging out in the middle of a bunch of chickens. It doesn't happen. Eagle instruction on how to fly at over 180 miles an hour is never ever taught in the chicken coop. And yet we push an illusion of leadership among volunteers and make them believe that doing a faithful job of playing keyboard on a Sunday morning or faithfully ushering will compensate for being unfaithful in your home Monday through Saturday. Does it? Does it really? Does the illusion really sustain your heart Or is the condemnation more than you can bear right now? You're a leader and you're refusing to progress, refusing to grow. You're called to be like an eagle, my friend. And that means you must, you must lead yourself to be like Jesus. You must learn to lead yourself to God's word every day. You must lead your thinking, your words, your actions, your choices. Yes, God sets before you life and death, blessing and cursing, but you, you're the one that must authorize it and choose. God doesn't choose for you. You've got to lead yourself to submit to the good shepherd. He doesn't force you. It's your choice to lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God in all of your ways. If you're tired of living weak, like a chicken, pecking around the barnyard and never soaring, you've got to break from the old ritualistic thinking and truly wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 40 verse 31 tells us to wait upon the Lord. It tells us to hook up to the Lord. And then the outcome is mounting up with wings like an eagle. That's the live life strong message calling that you were meant for. Look at 2 Peter 1 verse 10. Because of this, brethren, be all the more solicitous and eager to make sure to ratify, to strengthen, to make steadfast your calling and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble or fall. What a promise. You will never stumble or fall. This verse is in a whole chapter reminding believers that they've got all that they need to lead. All that you need to lead. Did you hear that? God says you've got all you need to lead and your calling is a big part of that. When you're in your true calling, when you take responsibility for receiving God's strength to be a leader, again, as Jesus defines it, serving others, loving others, then it keeps you from stumbling and falling. What a promise. Well, think of it this way. When the eagle is in his calling, he's not stumbling around a hen house, is he, looking for community? No. No, he's in the air cruising at an easy elevation of 6,000 feet riding the next updraft. He doesn't stumble or trip because he's strengthened in his calling. He's in his calling. Your calling matters and leaders lead from their calling. You might be a plumber or a sanitation worker. That's your assignment, but it's not your calling. Your calling is the thing that lasts beyond the next 100 years. You're called to be a child of God. And Romans 5.17 says that means that you're called to reign as a king in life. Now that's the calling. You are God's elect, his chosen royalty in Christ Jesus. That's you. So regardless of what God has you assigned to do today, a plumber, teacher, electrician, doctor, volunteer, social worker, if that's your assignment, be faithful and do it with all of your heart. Be faithful and God will put you over even more. If you're assigned to be a bricklayer, then do it faithfully. Be the best and let the Lord grow your vision for the future. Maybe you'll one day own one of the greatest stone and masonry companies in your city, maybe in the country. But the real strength flows out of your calling, your live life strong calling as a child of God. My friend, never downgrade your calling by losing it to your assignment. Can I say that again? Never downgrade your calling by losing it to your assignment. I've seen even pastors and ministry workers do that. Your assignment won't last even 90 years, but your calling will be for eternity. Your calling is your true identity while your assignment will endlessly evolve, endlessly. Never allow religious ideology to persuade you that if you're not a pastor or worship leader, your assignment is less in the eyes of God. If you're called to be a farmer, then use your high calling as a child of God to lead. You could very possibly be called to save the world from starvation like Joseph in the book of Genesis. You're a home builder 
Well, then maybe you're like the Apostle Paul who was a tent maker. You're helping families find shelter from the storms of life. That's exciting. Your calling makes the post office a place where miracles can take place. Oh, can you see it? Can you see it? Leaders lead. We need more ranchers filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God making decisions that affect the world around them. Your calling matters, child of God. Business people, hairstylists, media producers, managers, doctors, and house cleaners, your faithfulness moves the hand of God here on earth through your calling as his child, his envoy. Never ever diminish the power of how you live life strong by stepping out of your true identity. Never, never do that. As Jesus asked in Matthew 20, do you want to be truly great? then be a servant. Your calling matters because as a child of God, leaders lead. Stay in your lane. Be obedient to the assignment God has given you today. Life will evolve and you will transform continually, but your calling as a royal child of God, that's forever. It's God's genius and His grace for each one of us to live life strong. You're called to greatness and make no mistake, you are called to be a leader. That doesn't mean you can do anything. Even Jesus had to obey. You must obey the heavenly calling. Live life strong because he commanded us to be strong in the Lord. And then lead, yes, you, leaders lead. Start right now and pray this after me. Heavenly Father, I submit to your calling. I am chosen in Christ Jesus. I'm a child of yours. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your strength to soar like an eagle. I'm strong in the Lord. Help me with my assignment to be faithful in the little things. Help me to be a leader. Help me to faithfully serve. I've got a calling. It's time to lead. Here's the arena of my mind. I dedicate it to your glory and to live life strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.